Good morning to everyone. Good afternoon to everyone. Gerard, um, I think that we can wait another, obviously, we have to start to be effective. We wait that people is joining us. Can could we see you to check if your camera is working or um, to check also? Perfecto. And Kadiga, please, could you stop to share the screen and we try to share the stream of Gerard? Gerard. Thank you, Marcelo. Yes, I will try to share my presentation. Trying to inspire also our participants with some music. <laughs> okay. Just give me a second, please. Okay. And Just to be sure that we are in the meantime, I say good afternoon to all. Just a few participants. This morning we had a webinar with uh, Herman Bernarius. To talk about the international dimension of Erasmus Plus program. Mm -hmm. I think that we can stop the registration on the moment and we start with the registration just to start with my thank you, Federica. I will start with some very brief introduction and uh, to try to uh, not only to introduce the webinar of today, but to explain the reason why UNIMED is so interested to uh, share with our members and partners uh, the, importance, the importance of the Marisco Rosca Curie Act. Good afternoon to everybody. I'm Marcello Scalisi, the director of UNIMED. I'm very pleased to have with Gerard Brosperez from the European Commission, and in particular from Director General for Education, Youth, Sport, and Culture. Uh, Gerard will present us the Marisco Rosca Curie Action. Uh, in all the UNIMED week that we realized in the last years, this is, if I remember well, the sixth edition. Uh, and in, for, during the UNIMED week in presence, but also with the last one online, we always did a presentation of, about the opportunities of Marisco Oscar Curie Action. Uh, we are in a way very familiar with this program, which is a very competitive program, a very difficult one, but at the same time, a very important one and very, uh, a very good opportunity for researchers independently where they are from. This is something that we have to underline. Uh, it's something that we have also to uh, consider. It's not a European program only for European researchers, it's open. And Gerard will explain us in which, in which dimension is, uh, is open. And we invite our researchers, our university to consider this opportunity because it's extremely important for the researcher in itself, of course, but also for the university. Uh, for the university. Uh, it's not a matter of mobility, it's something more, it's how to improve research. Uh, there is something in the presentation that is not going well, uh, Gerard. Probably you open a window. Oh, now, yes. Uh, it, this is, uh, this, we discussed it this morning about the mobility programs, the ICM, the International Credit Mobility, but also the capacity building, the importance of the Erasmus Plus program. And all of you, as responsible of international relations or person in charge of international relations or mobility program, are absolutely familiar with the Erasmus Plus program. What we would like to improve in our network now is the possibility for our partners. For researchers, in particular from SouthNet, but not only, also from the European, to improve more and more the knowledge and the capacity to answer to the, the call of Paris Kurovska Curie Action. We are now in a new phase, as you know, for the, the, the European programs, not only for the Paris Kurovska Curie Action, but generally speaking. Every new phase shows us new opportunities. This is the reason why uh, we ask it again, the G education, uh, the G, the G education, to 
share with us the news about the program and to explain to our community uh, the opportunity for their research. Again, also for the other webinars, we will publish this webinar in our YouTube channel and we will advertise more and more. And of course, during the question and answer session, we will uh, try to understand which role also Unimed can play for the success of this program with Southern Engineering Research. I stop here. Thank you very much, Gerard, for your participation. And please, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Marcelo. Uh, I'm really happy to be here today. And I'm, I'm glad to hear that you, you consider the MSA as a very important program for the universities of UNIMED. We also think so, this is why we are here today. And we think there is a lot of potential for you to participate in this program, uh, which is funded under Horizon Europe, which is the bigger uh, research and innovation program of the EU. And therefore, I hope that this presentation will be useful to you and help you make a distinction between the opportunities available for organizations, how you can participate depending on which country uh, you are based in, and also which are the opportunities for individuals, because I'm sure that many of you come from universities, support offices all around the Southern Mediterranean or uh, on the other side in the EU. And I'm sure that you can also support individuals in your area to join this program and to find uh, opportunities for research and innovation positions around the world. Having said that, I will start. I hope I will not be too technical, so please uh, don't hesitate to stop or to ask questions on the chat if you don't understand what I'm saying, which is normal because it's a very complicated pro program sometimes, but well, hopefully uh, I will clarify some, some things. First of all, for those who do not know the MSCA, um, well, the MSA is the main uh, reference program for doctoral and postdoctoral training um, involving, as Marcelo said, indiv individuals from all over the world. So it's not only for Europeans. Far from that, we've got a huge amount of participants from uh, many countries. They account for nearly 40% of all the participants involved. And while the main goals of our program are mostly to build this human capital uh, that our countries need to uh, support progress, communicate evidence to policymakers, also to create connections between sectors of society and disciplines, and while most important of all, to anticipate future challenges that we will face. Um, and to do so, we are supporting individual researchers, institutions as well, uh, by helping them to build their skills and also uh, to yeah, bring their ideas and their research to the market, to society and to um, public institutions to support these changes that we um, underpin. And Finally, as I said, it's not only about individuals, it's also about organizations. A big amount of our support goes to organizations to support structural changes, uh, to drive change in research and innovation organizations, in companies, in the public sector, for them to be more attractive, to attract talent, and to enhance their visibility and, yeah, role in research and innovation. Uh, in the next seven years, we will spend 6.6 .6 billion euros for this program. So it's a huge amount. It accounts for a significant part of uh, Horizon Europe. And of course, yeah, it will be broken down um, call by call, but this is a total budget. I already said that, but um, well, the program has some characteristics that make it quite different from other research and innovation programs. For those that know the ERC, the European Research Council, will see many similarities. 
And while what we are doing with the MSCA is that we support research in all domains. There is no restriction in what we support. We only support good projects, excellence, basically. And to do so, well, researchers, institutions present their uh, projects and we select based on excellence and other criteria. This is why we call our program bottom up. Also, another key feature of our program is that we are supporting uh, mobility across sectors. This means that we make researchers move and create connections between the private sector, NGOs, yeah, private companies, SMEs, the public sector, research organizations, any organization can take part in the MSA in one way or another. Also, we create connections between disciplines. Interdisciplinarity is a core aspect of our program. And finally, also another important aspect is that we do so through mobility. So no matter which individual participates in the MSCA, he or she always needs to move from one country to another under certain conditions that I will explain. Another important thing is that we, with the conditions we promote and the kind of economical support we give to the individuals and organizations involved, we drive uh, attractive employment and working conditions which are very much needed uh, in academia and in the private sector. Finally, as I said, yeah, we support a strong collaboration beyond academia. So this is not only about research centers and uh, universities, it goes much beyond that. And also, yeah, we drive these, we drive this structuring impact that is needed um, on organizations, notably by supporting uh, PhD programs and also postdoctoral training programs. Many of you will recognize these features because they are common with Erasmus and actually we have many aspects in common as well with them. So the MSA can be used as a tool as well to support your organizations. And I will stress that a thousand times, but we don't do it enough. So voila. Then before we start, it's important that we make, yeah, some basic distinctions and that is that the access to the MSC and to the MSCA and to the funding uh, you can receive uh, through your organizations depends very much on which country you are based in. In Horizon Europe, we have three main categories of countries, EU member states, which can participate fully, associated countries, uh, which can participate in the same conditions as EU member states. In this case, we have Israel, Morocco, Tunisia, Turkey, also some other countries, but these are the relevant ones today. And finally, we have what we call third countries, which is a generic um, denomination, which can also participate to the MSCA under many conditions, I will explain in every case. In this case, it's notably Algeria, Egypt, Jordan, Lebanon, Libya, Palestine, and, and Syria. So having said that, another important distinction we need to make is uh, how different organizations can access funding. And this depends very much on whether they are beneficiaries. Beneficiaries are the organizations that sign an agreement with us. Usually they need to meet certain requirements because they get funding from the European Union and they get funding directly. On the contrary, associated partners contribute to the projects, but do not receive funding directly from us. They can get funding from projects funded by us, but not directly. It's only in certain conditions. You will see it's an important difference. Moving to the next slide. Another aspect which is important is the difference between yeah, organizations and individuals, as I said, because we are supporting on one side organizations directly, what we call legal entities, which can be academic or in other sectors and well in yeah, any country of the world, practically, it just depends uh, how they want to participate. And on the other side, yeah, individual researchers, I already spoke about them, but I will enter into detail later on. Just to give an overview, so far since uh, 2014, 
we've had more or less, yeah, more than 1,200 researchers involved in the MSCA from Southern Mediter Mediterranean countries. So excluding EU countries here. And uh, well, we've had uh, nearly 150 organizations from Southern Mediterranean countries taking part in the MSCA in nearly 300 projects. So the participation is quite high uh, and this notably for yeah, Egypt, Israel and Morocco and Tunisia. And this is normal because all except Egypt, they are associated partners, so they have access to more funding, etc. But also the other ones have participation um, of what of one kind or or another. Okay, now we enter into the substance of the presentation, and I will give you an overview of our main five actions. Um, we call actions the different strands of funding we have for different goals and well uh, we have these five you see here mostly we also have minor support actions but these are the main ones you will probably i hope apply to one day the first one is doctoral networks by which we support uh, doctoral programs um, uh, including with organizations outside academia, then postdoctoral fellowships. With postdoctoral fellowships, we support excellent postdoctoral researchers to do their research in Europe, in associated countries, or beyond somewhere else in the world. With staff exchanges, we support organizations to exchange staff across borders and sectors and disciplines, and these in all the world. So. Um, it's an interesting action for many of you. Then COFUND, through COFUND, we give, let's say, a significant amount of funding for organizations to set up their own doctoral and postdoctoral programs. Um, but we are not covering the full amount of these programs, but rather providing a certain percentage. And then these organizations need to top up with funding on their own. And finally, MSC and Citizens, which is a minor action through which we support outreach events and exchanges between the research sphere and the broader society. Okay, I will start speaking about <coughs> doctoral networks. As I said, um, the main goal of this action is to help organizations to set up uh, doctoral programs uh, and we give incentives to uh, create notably industrial doctorates. So it means with a big involvement of the private sector, everything that is not academia. So understand by private sector also NGOs, uh, civil society organizations, SMEs, etc. And also for joint doctorates. Joint doctorates, I mean doctorates where there is a very important component of co-supervision, uh, award of joint or multiple uh, PhD um, degrees, and also well a common um, setup of the educational uh, program. For this action, um, actually. Uh, to apply for the action, you should create a partnership of different organizations. There should be at least three. And as I said, any organization can take part. What is most important is that uh, the organizations should be established in different EU member states or associated countries, and at least one should be the, uh, from the EU. So for instance, you could have a partnership composed by a university in Spain, a university uh, yeah, in Lebanon, and a university in uh, yeah, Israel and Tunisia, just to give you an example. Also, yeah, um, well, in this case, we would have three organizations from the EU um, or associated countries, and then any other organization can join. So for instance, we could have an organization from Morocco joining, another one from, I don't know, Japan or the U US. So the action is really open and you should only meet the, this minimum number of institutions and one should be from the EU. And well, which are the conditions? So um, 
the EU provides funding in this case to uh, support programs of maximum 48 months. So these doctorates should last for maximum four years and the fellows can be mobilized for a duration between three months and 36 months, so up to three years. And yeah, there's a reason why we don't give funding for up to four years, which is the usual duration of a doctorate. And it's because we want also organizations to find alternative uh, funding to support this fourth year. And what we do is that we provide funding to pay um, all the expenses a researcher needs in a certain month, okay? And we give a maximum of months uh, of support, which is, yeah, 360. And so if you support 10 fellows, let's say, uh, for the maximum duration of three years, you will have 10 fellows supported thanks to us. But if you are doing this effort of setting up an industrial or a joint doctorate, then we give you extra um, 180 months of support to incentivize you and uh, yeah, help creating these connections with academia and with other, uh, with non-academic academic organizations, sorry, and with other organizations for joint doctorates. Well, as you see, this action is for doctoral candidates, but also organizations receive money to manage the, the program. And also, uh, well, they receive a certain amount to support, uh, to support um, research activities, networking, organization of events, et cetera, et cetera. As I said, uh, well, just for a summary, um, institutions from all Mediterranean countries can, can join these doctoral networks as beneficiaries. And if you are based in a third country, you can also join and you can also receive funding, which is the important aspect here. And regarding the students that want to do a PhD, uh, well, students from any nationality can take part uh, in uh, doctoral networks. And how does it happen? Once we select projects, these projects advertise their uh, vacancies on your access, which is a jobs portal we have for researchers. And then researchers from any nationality apply directly to these vacancies to do the research abroad. The only condition is that the fellows yeah, should fulfill certain mobility requirements. Usually they shouldn't have lived in the country of destination um, of their uh, yeah, doctorate for a certain amount of time, and also they shouldn't have a doctorate. But these are details rather for the individuals. And as I said, we give funding to these fellows, well, through the institutions we select for uh, living allowances, mobility, uh, family allowances, if the researchers have a family to take care of, and also some other allowances in certain cases. I will move now to postdoctoral fellowships, which is also one of our star actions. Uh, postdoctoral fellowships is widely su successful. Uh, through this action, we are supporting postdoctoral uh, researchers to um, allow them to do research in another country and help them develop their skills in academia and also beyond. And also to do research, if possible, um, that goes, yeah, um, that covers different disciplines, that is done in different sectors, and yeah, again, in a, another country. Again, here we're supporting any field of research, no matter um, what is the situation of the researcher, and also including Eurotom. I mentioned this because in the past we didn't finance research in uh, the area of nuclear research, and now we are doing so as well. So we are covering everything. In this action, we've got two main strengths. The first one called European Fellowships, by which a fellow of a certain uh, nationality, it can be of any nationality, will go to Europe or to an associated country for a period between 12 and 24 months. So in this case, we could have, for instance, a researcher from um, the US 
going to Morocco for a period between one year and two years, just to give you an example. Uh, then we have global fellowships. Global fellowships are only for uh, nationals or long-term long -term residents of EU member states or associated countries. And with this action, they can go for a period of between 12 to 24 months outside Europe or an associated country. And then they're obliged to return to Europe or an associated country. So to give you a very concrete example, a researcher from Lebanon could go to uh, Morocco for 24 months and then return to Lebanon. Um, uh, no, sorry, I said it the other way around. A researcher from Morocco could go to Lebanon for uh, up to 24 months, and then he or she would be obliged to return to Morocco for a period of 12 months. I hope it's clear now, sorry for that. Uh, during these fellowships, researchers can go on secondments worldwide. So it means that no matter where they are, they could eventually go for three months to, I don't know, Japan or to, to the US, but this under the condition that this secondment, of course, is relevant for the research topic and for the project. And there is another important thing, and is that besides the maximum duration of these fellowships, if at the end of the fellowship, the researcher wants to do six additional months of placement in a non-academic organization, we also support that. So again, in the case of the fellow that went to Morocco, to Lebanon for 24 months, then he, she would be back to Morocco for 12 months. And eventually he, she could do six extra months in Europe for um, a placement outside academia in a company, for instance. Who applies here? Institutions have a very important role and researchers do not apply alone. What they do, is that they get in touch with an organization that will support their application and submit it on their behalf. So in this case, um, a researcher would, for instance, um, a researcher based in uh, Tunisia would look for an organization in Germany. And then this organization would help this Tunisian researcher to develop an application and eventually submit it. If they get funding, the organization in Germany will receive the money and be responsible for the contract and the salary of this researcher. Here, even if you're not, so the researcher always applies with institution based in the EU or an associated country. So if you are an organization in a third country, you can also have a role. Notably, uh, to host researchers during these global fellowships. So for instance, as an organization in Egypt, you could receive a fellow for up to 24 months, completely paid by the EU. And uh, also you could receive researchers for their uh, secondments, for instance, for a period of three months, six months, and that's all, but still it's a very significant involvement, especially through global fellowships. Okay, so just a brief summary, if there's any researcher interested or if you are interested in supporting any uh, researcher, as I said, any researcher from any nationality can apply to this action, except for global fellowships where uh, we have only individuals from uh, the EU or associated countries. These postdoctoral researchers should have a maximum of eight years of experience in research after the award of their PhD. They should comply with certain conditions, what we call the mobility rule. So if a researcher goes from Tunisia to Germany, this researcher shouldn't have lived in Germany for more than uh, yeah, 12 months in the last three years. And uh, well, these are basically the broad conditions. The rest I explained already. Again, here we provide support for leaving mobility allowances, family allowances, and then support to the organizations for all the research activities that the researcher has to carry 
out. Before moving to the next slide, I hope it's not too tough uh, for those that do not know the actions. So, well, just you can drop a line on the chat to say if you're still alive and if you are following. Otherwise, we'll, I will do a nice summary at the end, but well, just I will just continue now. The third action that um, the MSE are supporting are staff exchanges. As I said, this action is extremely interesting for organization, organizations from all over the world because there's a huge involvement by organizations in third countries. What we do with staff exchanges is that we are supporting collaborations uh, among organizations in any sector. Again, also companies are welcome, uh, public sector, private sector, uh, academic organizations, anything. And what we do is that we support the exchange of staff among organizations between disciplines, sectors, and countries. And these two carry out a project in research and innovation where we see that some expertise is lacking, for instance, where there is some need for uh, knowledge transfer uh, or for mentoring, for instance. Actually, there are many possibilities within staff exchanges. What is most important is that these projects should um, really support the creation of innovative projects or ideas or uh, to bring ideas into the market, for instance, and any kind of staff can take part. So it's not only about researchers here, but also management of organizations can take part. Also, we could see, for instance, a technical staff that knows how to manage certain research or innovation infrastructures in a lab, for instance, or in a synchrotron, or I don't know, imagine any kind of specialized task that cannot be performed or that needs some support by uh, staff of other countries. Here again, we are supporting projects of maximum four years, 48 months, and we're giving support for a maximum of 360 persons. So here it goes a bit differently. What we do is that we don't support, we don't give any salary for uh, the staff involved. The staff will continue to be paid by their organization. And what we do is that we give a top up allowance, which is very generous. So it accounts for like a second salary almost. And with that, we want to support yeah, this movement of staff without um, yeah, breaking the links with their organizations. Who applies to staff exchanges? Here, we should have at least three organizations from three different countries. These are the minimum conditions. And two of these three organizations should be based in uh, the EU or associated country. To give you a concrete example, we could have an organization from, uh, let's say, Turkey, Spain, and um, yeah, uh, Lebanon, for instance, applying because with Spain and Turkey, we are fulfilling this requirement of minimum two organizations based in the EU or associated countries. If, and this is another condition, the organizations are from the same sector. So let's say that we've got a university in Spain and a university uh, in Turkey. If they are from the same sector, then there must be at least an organization from a third country. So involving an organization from Lebanon, this, consortia, uh, this consortium would fulfill the requirements. On top of that, any organization can be involved. So we could have, I don't know, 10 universities from, uh, let's say, Algeria, Egypt, uh, Morocco, mm, the UK, any organization. So usually the consortia in this action are huge. They've got a lot of organizations and this helped them really uh, support this movement of staff between the different partners. In staff exchanges, I see a question in the chat, which is very important and I will answer it right now. As I said, uh, any institution can join a consortia. Um, 
in staff exchanges and can host and receive researchers. And for the staff, the conditions are the following. Staff uh, has to be devoted full time to the project during the duration of their exchange. So no part time is allowed and they can be seconded up to, so from one month to up to 12 months. So unfortunately, 36 months is not, is not allowed, but the good news is that even if they move for uh, 12 months, which is the maximum duration, the stay can be split in different periods. So let's say that a staff can be mobilized for one month every two months if there's a maximum of 12 months. So this is the maximum duration. The staff taking part in exchanges should have been active in research and innovation for at least one month before taking part. So you cannot really recruit someone from scratch. Uh, this person needs to be already in one of the organizations in the consortia. And finally, another condition is that after the exchange, staff should return to the sending organization. So for instance, if we've got one member of the staff going from Greece to Lebanon to support, let's say, a summer school, then uh, this member of staff is obliged to return to Greece after uh, the exchange. Okay, uh, finally, I will speak about COFUND. This action, as I said, uh, is also a very useful tool and is notably for organizations based in EU member states and associated countries. The goal of COFUND is to support new or existing uh, doctoral programs and postdoctoral fellowship programs uh, that have yeah, a national character, transnational character or regional character. So it can be used for instance by, uh, let's say, a university to attract talents in a certain area. It can be used by, um, I don't know, a foundation to organize international exchanges of research uh, yeah, uh, and innovation um, researchers, sorry, um, in a certain area, or it can be also be used, let's say, by a funding organization. So uh, let's say a research body in your country that grants uh, fellowships to make researchers move um, from one country to another. Here, the goal is also to support um, yeah, our best practices, basically, by giving uh, organizations a minimum amount of money that they will need to cover the minimum salary we require for the fellows involved. And as I said here, uh, the target is to support doctoral candidates and postdoctoral researchers. The programs funded through COFUND should target one of the two. So it's not possible to create a program involving both doctoral candidates and postdoctoral candidates should be one of the two. Here, uh, what we do is that we support programs for a duration of up to 60 months and the fellowships have only one requirement. They should last for at least three months. So um, yeah, there's no uh, upper limit uh, contrary to what we have seen in postdoctoral fellowships or uh, doctoral networks. And also um, the organizations implementing the projects can organize secondments for up to one third of the duration of the fellowships. Finally, who applies to COFUND? Uh, for COFUND, it's also a bit particular because only one organization applies and this organization should be based in uh, the EU or in an associated country. Here, uh, third country organizations can take part or other organizations in member states or associated countries, but they join only as uh, associated partners. Usually these organizations are receiving some of the fellows or sending them. So they are usually partners in facilitating these exchanges or secondments. Well, for researchers here, there are also some conditions and uh, is that, well, once we select a project, 
this project has to advertise all um, uh, all these vacancies on your access, which is our research uh, jobs portal or in major job portals and uh, eventually PhD candidates or postdoctoral researchers apply directly to uh, the host organizations to work on yeah, their uh, own research uh, projects. And here, even though the EU is supporting only the minimum salary, as uh, organizations managing the projects, if you get selected, you will have to cover uh, living allowances, mobility allowances, family allowances, etc. So in most cases, you will need to find top up funding to help complement uh, the funding source provided by the EU. I see a question in the chat. How can individuals be informed about funded projects and implemented by organizations in order to benefit from the mobilities or the fellowships? This is a very good question. As I said, uh, for doctoral networks or co-fund, the projects we select are obliged to post their vacancies on Euraxis, which is this main jobs portal um, where, I mean, there are opportunities funded under the MSA, but also through other um, programs funded by the EU. So this is the main source of information for them, and they can find uh, positions as PhD candidates or postdoctoral researchers, and also usually the projects we select advertise their positions elsewhere. For staff exchanges, is a bit different because uh, usually the, organi the organizations identify themselves, the staff that should be taking part in the project because it's a very targeted support and usually they do not um, issue public calls to select this staff because it's for a very specific purpose. And finally, for postdoctoral fellowships, usually organizations like universities, companies, publish uh, hosting offers, which means that the researchers will have to submit a project to these organizations. And then these organizations help them, they work together to develop an application that will be submitted to the European Commission uh, through the host organization. These host uh, opportunities are usually published also on Euraxis, which is this portal I mentioned for job offers. So if you would like to host a postdoctoral fellow through postdoctoral fellowships, you should publish your uh, hosting offers in that portal. I will come to this later on. I will just finish with MEC and citizens, which is the last action, uh, the smaller one uh, we have. In this case, what we are doing is that we are supporting science outreach events through an event called European Researchers Night, which takes place at the end of September. So I take the occasion to invite you all to the events taking place uh, on Friday, not, not in all countries, but you can see there are many offering online activities as well. And what we wanna do with this action is to create these bridges between research innovation and the public and notably, uh, children and students. Um, the intention is to enhance the profile of research, to help society understand better uh, what the role of researchers is, also to raise the interest for research careers, and basically, yeah, to promote science and research and innovation. What we do here is that we give a lump sum, which goes to up to 150,000 uh, euros, to um, yeah, support the activities proposed. Usually it's science festivals. It can be, I don't know, um, yeah, speed dating between researchers and uh, yeah, students, let's say, or I don't know, all sorts of uh, quizzes, experiments, things like that. Also with this action, now we are supporting all year round exchanges between schools, or education um, institutions and researchers. So this is all also within the activities. And here, uh, yeah, we should have basically an organization applying or more based in the EU or in an associated country. So 
I cannot move to the next slide. Just to give you a summary, if your organization is based in, based in the EU or in an associated country, uh, you can participate as beneficiary in any action or associated partner in any action. There is no restriction besides yeah, the specific conditions that should be fulfilled uh, for the different actions. And if you're based in a third country, so here we maybe have organizations from um, Algeria, Egypt, uh, Jordan, Lebanon, um, Palestine, Syria, uh, then you can participate in doctoral networks as beneficiary and in the rest and also in doctoral networks of actions as associated partner. But in addition, as I said, for instance, for postdoctoral fellowships or staff exchanges, you can still receive staff at no cost or researchers in your organizations, even if you participate as associated partners. And just a quick summary for individuals. They're eligible um, for, uh, sorry, there is a little error in this slide. They can participate actually in any of the actions. So don't look at the no, uh, only the conditions to be fulfilled are the ones specific to each of the actions. So for instance, in the case of postdoctoral fellowships for global fellowships, they can only participate if they are based in an EU member state or associated country. But for the rest of actions, there is no limitation. And here you also have a summary of where the vacancies are published. Here you have also the call calendar for you to see. Now we've got uh, three calls closing very soon in October and November for doctoral networks, postdoctoral fellowships and MSc and citizens. But soon we will open the calls for staff exchanges. So this is very important and interesting for many of the organizations in your countries and also for COFUND. And then there will be a second opportunity to take part again in 2022. Beyond 2022, we still do not know uh, what the dates will be and maybe the program can will change a bit. So, well, it's still open. And well, just one last tip, if you are planning to apply or to give guidance to uh, interested organizations, then uh, the main reference uh, website is the Funding and Tenders Portal. It is there where we publish our calls for proposals and also uh, all the relevant documents. If you are planning to apply yourselves directly, then you should find the call that is most interesting for you. You have to sign in, register your organization if you never uh, if you have never done it. Find also uh, partners. There's a functionality to find partners to build a consortia a consortium in this portal, and finally apply by looking at all the conditions and fulfilling all the forms uh, necessary. And uh, as I said, in this portal, you will find a lot of uh, guidance documents and the most important are the guide for applicants, where we give a step by step uh, guide on how to apply and an overview of the rules and financial aspects. We also recommend you to check the work program is where the main eligibility and uh, well, the main conditions for each of the actions and for the program as a whole are written. And also, well, to check the more uh, technical documents, such as yeah, the proposal templates that you need to fill in to apply, also the grants, the model grant agreements, where you have an overview of the legal conditions uh, that um, yeah, will govern uh, your project. And also in the funding and terms portal, you've got a lot of guidance on how to apply, uh, on who to contact if you have a problem, frequently asked questions for applicants and for selected projects, et cetera, et cetera. Also, um, many countries, notably in the EU and associated countries have a national contact point and they will always be open to help you prepare your application, to find partners possibly, and also in some cases to review your applications, for instance, 
to make sure that everything is in order before uh, sending your project. So maybe we've got some colleagues from NEOs here. Uh, in the case of the MSC, it works differently. It's mostly the NCPs supporting um, the applicants. And finally, yeah, just check our website and the one of our executive agency, uh, the research executive agency in charge of implementing the MSCA. Uh, we've got plenty of guidance uh, for you out there and also even some tools to uh, check the compliance uh, with the rules, etc. So, yeah, well, and also you can attend information sessions organized by NCPs among others and by the commission. And well, finally, for individual researchers, I spoke about this already, but here you have the link to your access, which is the main uh, yeah, uh, portal for uh, yeah, positions funded under the MSTA. And here are yeah, our contact details, website, Facebook, Twitter, in case you have any question, you can get in touch with us. And also, well, if you have specific questions on um, eligibility conditions, on the rules of the program, you can also use what we call the research inquiry service. You can find the link on our website and it is through there that you should ask your questions and we will reply them as soon as possible. It's a centralized point for, for your questions. So yeah, I think I'm done. I hope I was not too tiring and I see a question in the chat. I will yeah. reply now. So feel free to send your questions. Please, please uh, go ahead. We're answering to the, the, the question of RF and then uh, some questions, but please invite all the participants. If you have any comments or questions, please write in the chat. Great, thank you, uh, Marcelo. Uh, RF, uh, you are asking if there's a focal point for uh, the MSCA. Actually, our focal points are these national contact points. So. Uh, it is to them that you should address. Um, um, you should address your questions, and they will help in the way they can. In some countries, there is no NCP. In that case, uh, you can eventually turn to us or to our research inquiry service. You can also send us questions, and we can eventually check with our agency. But please try to contact your NCP as the first uh, yeah, reaction, because they are super knowledgeable. They know everything, and and they are great in in providing assistance. So, yeah, please uh, feel free to do so. I see another question from Emad. Thank you, Emad. I'm not a doctor. I wish, but I'm not. Uh, but it's yeah, very kind. Um, mm -mm -mm. I see in Libya, we cannot apply for any program in MSTA. We have just doctoral networks open for us. Is this correct? Well, it's partially correct. If you want to participate and receive funding, indeed, uh, doctoral networks is the only option. However, uh, you can also participate in staff exchanges, for instance, and collaborate with a network of uh, organizations based in the EU, associated countries and third countries to receive or send staff abroad. And uh, you will not have to pay anything because the costs are covered by staff exchanges. So you will not receive funding directly, but uh, this staff will eventually move from Libya to somewhere and the EU is covering the cost through yeah, uh, the consortium, for instance. And also another thing that can be done is that you can eventually support uh, researchers uh, from Libya to do their research abroad uh, for up to two years, for instance, or uh, yeah, also through CoFund, for instance, uh, you could participate as associated partner to uh, yeah, support the mobility of researchers to train abroad um, in other countries. So there are many other possibilities. And also, yeah, uh, for postdoctoral fellowships, doctoral networks, co-fund, you can also receive 
um, staff for secondments, for instance, or researchers for secondments. So it's another possibility open to, to you. And I see another question by Aref. I don't know who, uh, if we still have a contact point for Lebanon, uh, I will need to check that. So I will tell you right now, I don't think we have any uh, right now. This is something I can, I can check and I will copy paste in the chat, the link for you to see if there is a national contact point in your country that you can get in, in, touch, uh, in touch with. And uh, yeah, for any question regarding this, you can also uh, be in uh, touch. If you, could, yeah, if you could share with us the link of the, to yeah. the national contact point, it would be nice because we could uh, inform our members and partners why not, to, 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 to be in contact with them directly uh, if they are thinking to submit some proposal or if they are looking. Uh, thank Indeed. you very much. Uh, if you are looking for uh, submitting proposals, um, this is the link to our national contact points. And only, yeah, if you wanna, yeah, look for the national contact point in your country or in another country. Eventually, if you are looking for partners abroad, for instance, sometimes they know about uh, organizations looking for potential partners, and yeah, you should select. MSCA Mariscalic Reactions in the function um, uh, drop down menu and also the country uh, you are interested in 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 the in the list of countries. So that is the the way to do so. If I may, I have a couple of questions for to, to try to understand two main issues. First of all, how a network like UNIMED joined with some of our members could participate. And second, how to advertise more and more the program in particular for Southern Mediterranean research. About the first one, I think if I understood well that probably we could apply for staff exchanges, why not? Jointly with some of our members. Potentially. Uh, Okay. Yeah, a, a priori, there is no limitation of the kind of organization, yeah. only it needs to be relevant for the project. So oh, okay. it could be, it could be, yeah, an opportunity, for instance. And also, I think what UNIMED can do, which is crucial, is to create links uh, among organizations in UNIMED that are looking for partners, because this is one of the most frequent questions we receive is how do I find partners? How do I join a consortium? And I'm pretty sure that UNIMED uh, could eventually, I don't know, it's a bit difficult as a task, but have an overview of potential projects with universities on both sides of the Mediterranean that could involve uh, other partners from, from UNIMED. And that would be a great, um, yeah, opportunity to create more connections with UNIMED countries. And also, well, eventually communicate to individuals or to the opportunities provided by uh, organizations that already participate in the MSCA and that are looking to recruit uh, fellows in their projects. This is another important, important part, basically. Yeah, and this is, this is uh, something that we is in, uh, in a way is easy is easy for us because it's our daily job to help our members to be in of contact course. among them and we know their own priorities and so on. Um, the other question, the other possibility that I see for Unimed in particular, obviously we could imagine to open in our website that now we are going to to uh, launch. Uh, the sort of window dedicated to Marisco Dosca Cree action opportunities and in a way to try to advertise and to invite our members to be active as much as possible with, within the opportunities offered by the program. What do you think about, for instance, uh, the MSCA and citizen opportunity? Why not to, to submit a proposal to Advertise the program in South Med region. Yeah, that could be 
for instance, yeah, a potential activity. Uh, but in parallel, uh, yeah, what would be important is to target the main publics for this action, which are yeah the broader public, most notably, Perfect. and uh, yeah schools, young public. It's the main goal. Uh, I'm saying that because yeah the goal of the action is not to communicate to researchers but to the public. So if you submit a proposal only yeah targeting communication to researchers then it will probably be rejected oh, so you yeah. know you know that's in the southern mediterranean region uh, uh, we have a young society a young society very youth society and this mm -hmm. could be interesting to advertise this opportunity uh, obviously in cooperation with universities schools and mm -hmm civil society organizations and so on would be in a way I think also an opportunity uh, to reduce the gap among Euro European opportunities and southern Mediterranean research communities and civil society generally speaking this would be something obviously we have to go more in detail um, I will try to answer to the question of Emad the the, 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 I will ask to Gerardo to provide us the, the, the slide, of course, and we will publish yes. in our yeah. website and you can download easily and you can review eventually also the, the webinar that will be uh, published in our YouTube channel. Don't worry about that. And uh, uh, we will for sure, have, we will receive, you will receive all the information. Uh, I have another question related, as I mentioned at the beginning, how to promote better and better this program to Southern Mediterranean research institutions and universities and so on. Um, what is your, your feeling on this? Because uh, we know how difficult it is the participation for researchers, not only in this program, but also in the Horizon Europe or the previous Horizon 2020 program and so on. And there is probably some frustration because the, 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 the success rate is very limited and they, they show the difficulties that they are to participate in such programs. Uh, what do you suggest in terms of not only discussing, for instance, as you said, with the National Focal Point, but what do you think is necessary to do to be successful or at least to know in, to participate in the right way, independent if you are successful or not, because it's a competitive process, it's very difficult. Mm -hmm. Well, f first of all, um, for organizations, I would say that what is most important is to first join consortia that are, are already running, if you don't have experience with the program, because they can give you a very useful insight uh, into how the action works, how it is managed, and often it's not their first time applying. Uh, so usually they applied a few times before getting funding. And here you, you can participate and benefit from the action without having to go to the lengthy and burdensome process of applying yourself as a beneficiary. So I would really encourage any organization to try to join existing consortia to advertise themselves on the funding and tenders portal and eventually to get in touch uh, with universities they already know and with whom they already have collaborations to see if they have any uh, any application ongoing or if they plan to submit one for the program and secondly and this is more for individuals i would first um yeah, try to enhance the profile of the existing opportunities, which do not require an application to the EU. So it's all the opportunities that we um, that are advertised on your access, which are funded by the MSCA, but which do not require uh, a full application process to the EU. Uh, in this case, it's applying to the organizations directly and the chances for success are much higher. Of course, yeah, the positions available do not cover all the research topics because they are targeted uh, according to the goals of the projects we select. But in many cases, there are projects that are uh, yeah, open to different disciplines. So I would really 
like recommend postdoctoral researchers on their early stages to apply first for a co-fund, for instance, or to try to find a position on their co-fund because they can have a postdoctoral uh, fellowship project covered with this action and then eventually uh, try to apply to postdoctoral fellowships as long as they don't get to these maximum eight years of experience that where we put the bar, let's say. Um, it's also a useful tool for them in the meanwhile to learn more about uh, grant preparation, also to know how to prepare their own um, research project, to have the right connections, to find a suitable organization uh, to prepare their project with. And also what is most important is time. Like uh, many applicants apply for the first time, they are frustrated but they didn't prepare enough. And what is most important here is to try to look for a good supervisor that can support their application, that is knowledgeable about the MSA. Many organizations have an incredible expertise in the program that even we do not have. So it's very important yeah, to, to find a good, a good uh, yeah, supervisor. And then uh, also there are a lot of resources out there, webinars uh, filmed uh, live that can be used uh, to prepare an application. And also a very important tool is to, uh, for fellows seeking to apply to postdoctoral uh, fellowships to get in touch with people that already got one. And a way to do so, for instance, is uh, the Marie Curie Alumni Association, which has also a very valuable uh, experience in that sense. And themselves, they offer uh, training for potential um, yeah, recipients of, of the program. So this would be a bit the tips I, I would have for, for thank them. You, thank, you. thank you very much. There is a question from Mohamed the Booz Nobel from Jordan. Yeah, unfortunately we don't have we don't have a contact point in Jordan, unfortunately. Uh, but it also, it's not also in the, in the country list. I, I did a, a check on the website. In, in, on, yeah, in this the is... Time. I don't know if it's... Uh, this is because case. there is no uh, institution from Jordan ah, yeah, that so acts exactly. as a national contact point. We've got but actually... This, is eligible. This, is, this means, uh, in any case, it's eligible. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't mean anything. I mean, it's just that it's usually the ministries uh, or yeah, research agencies of the country appointing a national contact point. And in this case, yeah, Jordan didn't appoint one. Uh, but there are NCPs in Libya, in Israel, in Turkey, in Tunisia, in Morocco. And uh, yeah, I think for us, well, in all the EU countries as well. And I think this is all, but some projects are still in the process of nominating yeah. NCPs yeah, because yeah. since we changed to a new program, the person behind changed. So, well, it might be that the list is not fully, fully updated yet. Yeah. Okay, I think that Unimed for this will open a sort of um, uh, desk uh, to support our members in. Uh, to be aware about the opportunities of MSA, MSCA uh, and also to be in contact with uh, the national contact point because we already know, for instance, the national Erasmus officer will be also important for us to be in con direct in contact with uh, every single national contact point where it exists, obviously, and to try to support our members to put in contact with them with the uh, with our members and you know the the, uh, the program. Um, I don't know if you have any other uh, things to add to your presentation that you have in mind concerning participation of Southern Mediterranean universities, because you know research institutions South Med are more related to governmental. Uh, side than university side. Universities are improving on this, are going more and more on the research dimension. And I think that these opportunities offered by the program are extremely important, both for the institutions and for the research. Mediterranean, the southern Mediterranean region is not is a priority for European Commission, talking about neighboring policy, 
But of course, once we talk about research, it's not fully dedicated to euro mediterranean uh, region, uh, obviously. Uh, but I think that it could be important for our countries to be um, to participate in the right way and in the best way possible. What do you suggest to do something to do more? Because we could organize continuously meetings and training sessions to our uh, universities. But for instance, uh, for the Erasmus program, we have the International Relations Department of the universities or the Mobility Department mm -hmm. that are fully aware about the opportunities. They know very well the program. Once we move to Marie Skrodowski Curie Action Program, there is not an office specifically dedicated to that. This could be the way to solve this lack of participation in South Med, or it could be that every research department, every research institution inside the university have to be aware about the opportunities. What do you suggest on this? Well, I, I would say here that um, it would be useful, of course, if every organization could yeah, afford to have um, an international office uh, in charge also uh, of this kind of, of projects. I mean, I think the program is still very unknown. So doing some uh, awareness raising among yeah, institutions in the Southern Mediterranean would be already a great uh, way to start. And seeing that, yeah, there are no NCPs in certain countries uh, for which we have actually an important participation like uh, yeah, Egypt or yeah, Jordan or, or Lebanon, for instance, um, would be great to yeah, be able to support them at least on, on the first stages of their, of their um, yeah, uh, of their, I don't find the word now, but in finding opportunities under the MSCA. I mean, I believe Unimed could do some support in that in that sense, especially because you can reach out to many organizations in in these countries, and 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 yeah, why not encouraging them to 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 enlarge the scope of of their activities. To, to include as well the, the MSA. I know because I was working formerly uh, with another uh, program called Intra-Africa and Intra-ACP that many organizations already have experience with other EU funding uh, instruments and also in managing uh, projects of a, of a considerable budget. So uh, the MSC is also a great tool to do so and in creating yeah, connections among, among them. And what is more yeah, really interesting here is that it can be used also as a way to create connections among uh, Southern Mediterranean countries uh, because Morocco, Tunisia, Israel, Turkey can participate as beneficiaries and you can include the rest of countries as, um, as partners in a project. So uh, sometimes it's more about yeah, trying to fit a project that you already have in mind and for which you already have a very well-established collaboration into a framework where you can get funding for, and I'm sure there are many projects out there that could be supported by the MSCA. So why not try to, yeah, try to apply? And I see some comments from, from Arev. Uh, we used to promote FP7 and Horizon 23 in our Erasmus Plus info days, but it was not done in a systematic way. Yeah, this is something also that, uh, yeah, we are doing sometimes and uh, at AAC, we're trying to promote all our programs uh, to the wider community and include the MSCA, which is not part of Erasmus, but also to have it mentioned and explained uh, during our info days. So we're doing an effort in that, in that sense as well. Yeah, I think that as you say, uh, as UNIMED, we have to play a role on this. Why not also with the support of uh, uh, our colleagues in the region, in particular, uh, 
National Erasmus Officer, why not? As a rep that are very active, don't know very well the universities, and they could uh, jointly, we could also do something to, to push our members. But also, thank you very much for this suggestion. Why not to have a sort of South South uh, research project, uh, joint it's, project? That could it, be fantastic because we are, we are trying to promote the South South cooperation, thinking that we need to create a region that at the moment, talking about the Mediterranean region, doesn't exist because the lack of cooperation among Southern Mediterranean countries is there. Unfortunately, not only from the academic point of view, but also from the economical point of view. And I think it could be great to have um, joint projects among associate partner countries and third countries uh, coming from South Med. It could be really, really extremely interesting. And I will, uh, as Unimed, I think that we will open uh, surely uh, part of our work to support our members in, to, to achieve uh, some potential results with uh, a risk of those criteria action as we do with the Erasmus Plus program, with the international credit mobility, with the capacity building, with all the opportunities for our university. But unfortunately, we didn't do this for uh, MSTA in the past, but for sure we will do. Thank you very much. I don't know if there are any other uh, question. I think that we are perfect on time. I can ask you send me the, the slide, the correction, <laughs> yeah, in, the, in the, the column that you mentioned before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. indeed. Uh, thank you for that. And uh, we will for sure be in contact to continue this debate and discussion and to promote as much as possible uh, the program. And uh, if you are thinking to organize something in the region of advertise uh, another time this program, please let us know and we will do our best to promote your uh, initiative. Thank you very much to all the participants. Thank you so much. Uh, it has been a real a great pleasure. Please uh, pass my greetings to all the colleagues of your, uh, your office. Uh, thanks, I'll do so. thanks to the participants. Thank you to Federica De Giorgi for the technical support. And uh, we will continue in the coming days with the other webinars. Tomorrow we will have the webinar dedicated to some network on uh, employability. Let me check uh, the, 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 file, the program. Tomorrow we will have this uh, webinar with organizing the framework of the sub network on employability. And in the afternoon, we will have a presentation of the intercultural trends report by the Annalyn Foundation, which is one of our main partner. Uh, Monday, we will have a very important webinar uh, with the, again, European Commission, the Director General for Research and Innovation. We will talk about the international dimension of the future of the current Horizon Europe program. On 28th, we will talk with Union for Mediterranean to go more in detail about the report on internationalization of education in the Mediterranean. We will talk more in detail about practice recommendations that we define in the report. On 29th, we will have another important webinar with the European Training Foundation, another information, talking about micro credential, which could be something very interesting for also for Southern Mediterranean universities, but also for European universities. And finally, the 3rd of September, the last webinar will be with the Virginia to talk about uh, the agenda in, of, uh, for the new agenda for Southern Mediterranean cooperation. And we will talk more practically, pra practically than we did in the first webinar discussing with the, Stellar, the European External Action Service. Thank you very much again for your participation and see you in the coming uh, webinars. Thanks also for the information about all these links. We will advertise. And uh, see you, Gerard, I hope see you in Brussels soon. I uh, hope so. I hope next time we'll see each other in Brussels. For yeah. sure, for sure. Thank you very much again. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye. Thanks to everyone for joining. Bye-bye.